of people actually making a horror movie, a point of view horror movie out of the haunted mansion. It's actually it's only eleven minutes long, but it's super creepy. I can't remember what it's called, but you can it just um, I'm trying to remember the name of it. It's it's not very long. It's like a little point of view ride, and yeah, it was actually shot at the haunted mansion, but uh, huh. I cannot re for the life of me remember the name. Uh. Anyway, it's re it was really cool, but it just kind of the whole supernatural occurrences thing just reminded me of that. Anyway, uh, third question: Are there any spooky, scary skeletons and shivers down your spine? Do -do. Uh, not at the moment, Alex. And yes, I got the reference. Yay you, Alex. Yay you. All right, moving on now to Dylan Malone, fourteen. And, uh, kind of already answered, the first question is, uh, already, uh, <clears throat> wait, okay, sorry. Uh, what do you want to do with the ride to make it better and or scarier? Kind of already answered this one already with the whole hologram ghost things walking through the, through the hallways. So, yeah, I already answered that. And second question, if you made the, ha the, the last Haunted Mansion movie, what would you do to make it better? Everything. Everything. I would change everything. Get rid of the family, make a completely different story, make it a little more creepier, but not too scary. And I'll actually answer why in, the, in your next question. Uh, what do you want to see in the new Haunted Mansion movie? Okay, uh, um, now I really get to m bring my thoughts out on this one. So, for those who don't know, Guillermo del Toro is trying to actually make a remake of the Haunted Mansion movie. He wants to do a completely new one, and Disney's apparently giving him the green light, and apparently Ryan Gosling's in talks to be part of the film. I have no idea how that's going to go. I mean, Ryan Gosling's a really great actor, but he's not one of the guys you usually you see on, on del Toro's go-to list. If anything, we all kind of thought Ron Perlman would be in this, and for all we know, Ron Perlman's going to show up as a ghost. Now, the reason why I think Del Toro's a perfect pick for this film is because, one, while he does do horror films, and believe me, he's done really good ones, and he does very good sty stylized films, and the main thing he does not lose is that sometimes in a lot of his creepy films, like in, you know, Pan's Labyrinth and a few others, there's still a sense of charm in there, and... Haunted Mansion, while it is supposed to be scary, there is sense of a uh, sense of whimsy in there. There's a sense of whimsy and charm in there. Remember when I said the ghosts in the in the ride are supposed to be they're supposed to scare you, but they're not evil. And yeah, they're not they're not evil ghosts. So I think Del Toro would actually would get that. Like yeah, they're not really scary. They're just cursed and they just want to freak people out. It will be fun. Now, not to say there will probably be scary... There will be scary elements in there. There probably will. I mean, this is Guillermo frickin' Toro, Del Toro we're talking about here. And that... This mansion's gonna look beautiful. I'm just gonna say right now, that mansion's gonna look frickin' beautiful. And I think... Um, I think Del Toro, like I said, won't lose the sight that, you know, these ghosts aren't... You know, maybe there will be some evil ghosts, but I wouldn't say, like, all of them are going to be trying to kill it... Or trying to be evil here. So, I think that would be... I think that's the angle they want, you know, he want, he would probably go with in that, uh... <clears throat> well, where was I going with that? I think that's the angle he would go with. Among other things, I think... The other thing I want to see is, you know, a coherent story and a better one. Yeah. Hell, you... <laughs> there's a part of me that thinks that you don't need human characters as the main focus. You don't need human characters. You can just focus on the ghosts. You could actually fo uh, make it a, like a darker version of Casper the Friendly Ghost, where you have... There's 999 characters you can frickin' choose from in this... In, in a new story. Hell, you could have, I don't know, the Hatbox Ghost in there. Have the... Uh, shit. Have, uh, the three, um, the three hitchhiker ghosts. Yeah. Have, have the three hitchhiker ghosts as the main characters. Ma have that. Or, hell, have the, if you want to do a human support, have the human, uh, the only human character be the caretaker, or hell, have it, you know, be centered around him. 
There's so many different ways you could do this, and I think, you know, Dis once again, Disney really met, well, the director and everything else, Disney included, m really missed the mark on the Eddie Murphy film. But, yeah. <clears throat> uh, also, another thing, if you're going to do the lines from the ride, like, of course there's always my way, or some, and, you know, stuff like that, don't shoehorn, you know, make them count. Don't make it sound like, oh, we gotta do a quote. We gotta do a quote. Like, how, and I'm sorry, the J.J. Abrams movies, the Star Trek movies did this too, but you're like, oh, quote time. Make it, you know, a little more flow. Flow it a little better. I, I, it's, it's nearly impossible to do, but yeah, that's, that would be nice. I know I just made zero sense on that, but yeah. Anyway, thank you for those questions, Dylan Malone 14. Moving on now to, uh, <clears throat> The Spawn 117, and for, and his question is, the Ghostbusters, Ash, Alucard, Hellboy, Doctor Strange, go to the Haunted Mansion, what happens? Like I said earlier, all the ghosts instantly leave. They would just be like, oh, what's co oh, Ghostbusters, guy who kills deadites, unkillable vampire, demon, sorcerer supreme, yeah, we're, we're gone. Yeah, we're, we're gonna leave now, we're gonna ascend now. <laughs> <coughs> Anyway, second question. Um, do you think the Haunted Mansion would f fit perfectly in with Supernatural? Absolutely. I'm not the big... Even though, you know, I know some stuff, I never really got into Supernatural. Oh, I know. Weird, right? I never got into Supernatural. Well, that show started long before I got into, like, watching CW stuff. And I know it's on Netflix and all that, but I was just like, eh. The, fan the Supernatural fandom really, like, really off-puts me sometime when I'm online. They're just really off-putting, and I don't want to bash fandoms, but they get a little too defensive sometimes. And the show, and I have seen a few episodes, like, reruns on TNT, and I'm like, oh, this is really good, but when it gets past season five, oh, man, does it drag. But I, I don't hate the show. I don't want to sound like I hate the show. I'm just not a fan. That's all I'm saying, is that I'm just not... I'm just not a fan of Supernatural. If you like it, that's totally fine. No ill will against you. Just not a fan. But, yeah, to answer your question, yeah, I could see it as an episode. Anyway, thank you for those questions, Spawn. Moving on now to Andrew Varney, who asks, Out of all the 999 happy haunts in the mansion, who are your favorite and why? Hmm. Madame Leota. It's always a given. The Hatbox Ghost. So glad he's coming back. I like. I remember watching. Like I remember when I said earlier in this video, uh, they had old uh, footage from the from the ride. The Hatbox Ghost was actually in that footage. I was like, yeah, I thought he was so cool. And the fact that they're bringing the Hatbox Ghost back is really awesome. Um, yeah. So the Hatbox Ghost, uh, the singing, the singing heads. Yeah, the singing tombstone heads. Those are really fun. And uh, yeah. Just to name a few, those are a few. I just repeated myself, sorry. <laughs> okay. Second question. What are your fa favorite version of the mansion? Mine is the Phantom Manor in Disneyland Paris, followed by Disney World. Okay, I've never been on the Phantom Manor because I've never been to France. But I have seen, like, point of view rides of the Phantom Manor. And for what it is, it's actually it's pretty cool. Um, but there's one moment in there, like, it, it feels a lot like the original ride of the, of the... If you've, ever, if you've never heard of the Phantom Manor, or you've never been on it, or never seen footage of it, basically it's a lot like the, the Phantom... It's like the... the uh, what was I going to say? The Haunted Mansion in of itself. But there's two major differences. It actually focuses on a woman who is, who's lost her love, and now she haunts the, uh, the mansion with all these other ghosts. And you see her a few times, and then instead of going into a graveyard, you literally, it's almost like you're descending into hell, and it, the ride goes backwards, and you see all these rotting corpses rise out of these tombs, and you're actually going deeper and deeper into the ground, and into like this undead town. It is so freaky and so cool at the same time, I'm like, this would never pass um, here in America, but god damn, this is cool. <laughs> No one would want to, you know, no kid would ever want to get on this ride again with all these rotting corpses. Oh, God. <laughs> um, anyway, 
Thank you for that question. Moving on to your third and final question. How would each, each of the following characters react to being locked in the mansion? Dipper and Mabel, Abridged Krillin, Phineas, Ferb, Isabella, Abridged and Candace, Abridged Popo, Casper the Friendly Ghost, Stephen and Connie, the main six, Jack Skellington, and the Mystery Ink Crew. Okay, to answer the ones, because I already answered Dipper and Mabel, the Mystery Ink Crew, uh, Stephen and Connie, and and Casper. Yeah, there was also Casper. Here's a bridge Krillin if he was locked in the in the cap in the mansion. Oh God! Why won't they keep? Why do they keep scaring me? And the Krillin poem numbers would keep going up, whereas a bridge Popo would just be like. Hi. Uh, get the f and the ghost would be like, get the fuck out, get the fuck out. <laughs> we gotta go. <laughs> um, Jack Skellington's technically already been to the mansion in the actual ride. The main six, um, Pinky would be having a party in the graveyard. That's scary. Um, yeah, Rainbow Dash would be I don't know zipping around having fun, and Rarity would just be completely freaked out. No, all of them would be freaked out except Pinky. But Fluttershy, she wouldn't even be near the Haunted Mansion. Um, Krill, uh, oh wait, Phineas, Isabella, and Candace. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> Is Isabella would be clinging to Phineas like a lifeline, whereas Candace would be running around screaming like an idiot. A terrified idiot, but nonetheless. So anyway, thank you for those questions, Andrew. Moving on now to, Co uh, to Kobe Romy. Hope I'm saying that last name right. Anyway, um... Sorry, I had to get some water. <clears throat> uh, which Disney vil... His question is, which Disney villain uh, would you have spend the night at the mansion and why? Uh, let's go with Dr. F uh, Dr. Uh, Facilier, or Dr. Falsher, however you say his name. Why him? Because he can, you know, voodoo stuff. You know, he can conjure the dead and all that. And maybe even control... The, uh, the spirits, so... Yeah, let's go with him. <laughs> anyway, thank you for those questions, Kobe. Moving on now to... Uh, Boo Rat 01. Okay, Boo Rat 01. His question is, first question is... Uh, if you were to make your own movie or comic based on the ride, what setting would you like? Modern day or some past era? Also, who would be the, uh, be the point of view? Humans or the ghosts? Uh, kind of already answered this, but all right, you made it a little more specific, so I guess I'll go a little more into it. Um, make it if I were to do a comic on it, I would make it like an anthology, kind of like what they're doing with Dynamite over at Twilight Zone. Make it an anthology and make it kind of like maybe one story arc focused on ghosts, or one story arc focuses on human on a human character that's come to the mansion, or a story arc that focuses on like the origin of how someone died and became part of the. Uh, uh, became part of it. So, yeah. Something like that. Make it an anthology comic. Alright. Second question. As, as I've never been to Disneyland and, go, and got on any of, the, any of these rides, how good is the ride and how many times have you gone on it? Oh, a bunch! But not once has it ever broken, has it not broken down. Seriously, like I mentioned before, I've never been on that goddamn ride when it hasn't broken down. Seriously, I could literally sing... I can now probably have memorized the entire Grim Grinning Ghost song. Yeah. That's how many times it's broken down. And also how many times I've wrote it. That many times, people. That many times. <sighs> <clears throat> So, third question, yeah, third question. Um, Haunted Mansion meets the 13 ghosts. Uh, how would that nightmare go? Oh, God. The, the, the remake of 13 ghosts, the 2001 remake, oh, man. That would be something to behold. Seeing, you know, the 999 ghosts be more or less... They would be enslaved by the... <laughs> by the other 13, because those 13 are pretty... Well, one of them isn't, but the other 12 are pretty wicked. <laughs> anyway, so thank you for those questions, Boo Rat 01. Moving on now to Sora vs. Ka. First question is, what would happen if, the G if G1 Starscream's ghost came to live in the mansion? Okay. <coughs> 
G1 Starscream's ghost at the mansion. Here's how it would go. He'd be like, all right, you own 